What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be a video that may be concerning to some folks and I definitely felt the need to make a video about this topic because I have recently made a video about this topic but from a different product manufacturer. So it's really important to understand when you buy a product, you use a product, specifically one designed for towing, that it's going to do what you need it to do without the risk of failure. And unfortunately, we have an announcement of a second product that has failed from a different manufacturer. So let's talk about it. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so the reason why we have the 2024 F450 Platinum in the shop is to reference the product in question today. And that is this really, really cool product one I've done several videos on, and one that I think is absolutely kind of a game changer in terms of giving you extra room and extra flexibility, whether you're towing a gooseneck trailer or a fifth wheel with a gooseneck conversion, whether it's the Gen Y Executive gooseneck conversion or whether it's the Reese Goose Box or several of the other brands that are out there. Uh, the only one that I specifically use is the Goose Box because it's approved for pretty much every Lippert frame. Um, Gen Y has approval from Brinkley and I think possibly a few others but um, for me I'm not moving to a Gen Y on the Brookstone because the Brookstone frame is not compatible with the Gen Y executive gooseneck coupler so that's the main reason why if you want to know uh, that said if you have a Brinkley if you have a Lux I believe and even some other brands I think New Horizon they all approve use of the executive from Gen Y which is a really really robust incredibly well-built product now why are we looking at what they call the goose puck so this is the Gen Y Goose Puck. Looks like a big wing. It's basically a five inch offset ball puck system. So it lets you use a traditional goose ball. It mounts in the center hole that you would typically mount the goose ball, but then the goose ball itself is positioned five inches further back. Then the wings attach to the puck system so it doesn't rotate whenever you're turning or whenever you're stopping. Basically holds the whole system in place. Now, this product to me, has been absolutely phenomenal. It is a great product. It is very, very well built. Let me hop in the bed of the truck here so we can show you. So if you wanna look at how robust this thing is, that right there looks like a piece of three quarter inch thick steel plate. It is absolutely massive. That's quarter inch thick steel plate. You can see how it is welded all the way around right here. It's welded all the way around right here. And right there, that piece actually drops into your factory OEM gooseball connection. A viewer emailed me and showed me pictures of a failure that occurred with his goose puck system. He said he had roughly 4,500 pounds worth of pin weight pressing down on it. This is rated at, I believe, 25,000 pounds. I don't know the exact rating from a pin weight perspective though, but I would imagine it's probably gonna be in the 5,500 to 6,000 pound range. I just don't know the exact number. Uh, that said, the failure of his specifically occurred when the weld right here broke. And the way this is built, the way it's designed, that failure was significant, right? It's a crack, but it's so overbuilt that even though that portion of it failed, the ball may have shifted slightly but it probably had no real chance of coming out or separating unless there was some huge traumatic event that occurred right after. So we reached out to the folks over at Gen Y and he reached out to me and the folks over at Gen Y said that they wanted to replace his assembly with an upgraded version of this. Now, this is where pin weight isn't the only thing you have to factor in. This is also where whatever you're hauling is gonna come into play since you're gonna have the momentum of that moving forward or pulling against it whenever you come to a stop or accelerate, especially if it's an aggressive stop or if it's an emergency stop. And the good thing is, is it didn't completely fail. And it would have been unlikely with the damage to completely fail in that instance. It could have progressively gotten worse and worse over time until it did fail completely. And that probably would have led to something else happening. But again, one of the things that I talked about in the Anderson Ultimate Fifth Wheel Hitch Failure 
was the fact that if a single component's about to fail, you may not really know. You may not know to look for if that's gonna happen. And if you have a steel product, typically there are gonna be some signs. There are gonna be things that you could kind of reference to. Something's not straight anymore, it's bent. A weld is starting to crack, something's happening. And it kind of clues you in that you should probably stop using the product and contact the manufacturer immediately. Now, when he contacted Gen Y, they were very, very helpful. And they basically said, we're gonna send you the new product, we're improving it, and this is how it was improved. And they expressed that to him. The product that he has, of course, is not something that's safe to continue using. But I do like the fact that Gen Y, when I reached out to him, owned up to it right away. They basically said, yes, we did notice a few instances um, and we are taking care of those, but you shouldn't have anything to worry about. The one that you have in your vehicle is fine. Now, they're going to send me a replacement so I can take a look at it and I can see what improvements were made to the welds. But... Uh, the few instances that this has occurred where some cracking has occurred, they say, is a very, very small number. So the product itself, in my opinion, is, is a good product. I like it. That's the reason why I'm using it. I love the extra space that it's given me. But the reason why something like this is so popular because of what it does for you. And mainly, it gives you extra cab clearance so whenever you're hauling a fifth wheel and you're making a turn it's less likely that the overhang of your fifth wheel will make contact to either your toolbox or the back of your truck depending on you know what type of truck you have what type of rv you have but also the extra room that it gives you behind the tailgate and the front section of your gooseneck trailer or fifth wheel it gives you about five inches of extra room and that's huge one of the reasons why i really like this and i think most people probably know this is if you have some of these vehicles with these electric tailgates there have been instances where those tailgates have come down unintentionally. And if the tailgate drops down and you make a turn, you're very likely to either damage the front of your RV, damage your tailgate, or damage both of them. And that's just not a good situation to be in. But with this in place on my truck, I can actually have the tailgate of my truck completely down, make a turn, and not hit the front of my fifth wheel or any of my gooseneck trailers. And that's also some really good peace of mind. I know some people are concerned with the position of this pushing the pin back slightly, about five inches, saying that it's gonna create a very odd towing experience and it's gonna transfer some weight where you might normally not have it, but I haven't experienced any of that. You know, we have a very heavy fifth wheel. Well, it's kind of heavy, right? It's about 17,000 plus pounds with about 3,600 pounds worth of pin weight. And we haven't experienced any of those issues. There's no cracking going on with our product. Um, again, even if it were to begin to crack, this is one of those products that you could clearly see a failure starting to occur and you can address it before it becomes something that's catastrophic. So that's the big difference between something like this versus some other products. Some of the other products, when a failure starts to occur, it could likely be catastrophic the instant that failure happens. With a product like this, it's so overbuilt that even if a weld issue starts to happen, if something starts to break, you have the ability in most cases to look at it, say, you know what, I need to stop using that, call the manufacturer, get guidance from them on if they think it's still safe to use it for a short period of time or not. But ultimately, steel will typically give you some type of a sign that something bad is happening to it before it ultimately fails. But I do appreciate the folks over at Gen Y for stepping up whenever these instances have occurred, the few times that it's occurred, and dealing with customers, helping them, replacing them, and also upgrading and modifying the product so it's just not something you have to worry about if you get the newer version of it. Uh, that said, I was gonna remove this for the time being, but I don't really think I need to. I mean, it is, it's a very robust product. If I start to see any issues at all, um, I would of course stop using it immediately. The other thing too to keep in mind is my pin weight's about 900 pounds lighter than the pin weight that was on the unit in question. And I just, I don't necessarily feel like I'm gonna have that type of a failure. Also, considering the fact that whatever trailer he was hauling to give him a 4,500 pound pin weight was probably a lot heavier as well. So you have to think of a lot of things. Even your trailer brake settings can come into play when it comes to towing and understanding how much weight or stress is gonna be on your trailer coupler as well as your hitch at any point while towing as well. If your trailer brakes aren't dialed in properly, then every time you hit the brakes, if the trailer is not assisting, more of that weight and inertia is being applied to the product itself. 
Anyways, guys, in all fairness, I just wanted to be very clear and transparent and share with you all that another viewer has come forward with the product that has experienced a weld failure. The product itself did not completely fail, but it did have a weld that did fail, and they explained to me that Gen Y did step up to address it and replace the product with a brand new one, while also explaining to me that the failure that occurred did not pose any immediate safety issue because it wouldn't actually have caused the ball to come out of place or detach from the main assembly. Anyways, guys, please leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm very impressed with how Gen Y stepped up for this customer. You know, as with all products, there is always some type of a chance, some risk that something could potentially happen. I've seen some B&W towing stoves that have failed because rust has gotten into a weld. So no product is immune from it. What you have to keep in mind though is what manufacturers do when they identify it how they feel about a failure when it's occurring, how critical it is, if they basically have over-designed something so even if you know a weld starts to crack, the overall risk of the entire product failing is minimal, and how they step up to address it for you, the consumer. Do they improve the product? What do they do to make sure that the risk of failure is so minimal that even if it were to occur, it wouldn't be catastrophic. And I think those are all things we all care about because we all know, anybody who hauls a trailer knows that there's always the potential that some component could potentially fail. That's why you have chains. That's why you have breakaways. That's why you have these other components to help mitigate that risk if it were to occur. Anyways, guys, please leave a comment below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Still a big fan of the folks over at Gen Y. I'm a big fan of the folks over at Anderson for stepping up and, and creating a newer version of their product, which is also far more robust. But anytime a manufacturer does the right thing, once something is found out, that's really the determination on the quality of that manufacturer, as well as their ethics and their credibility. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.